That's the game winner. Falcons win it 53-50. State champs for the 16th time in boys basketball. Welcome to this special edition of Conversations with Cubit. I am super excited about tonight's conversation. I can, you man, woo! As you know, I love everything about the Millwood Falcons here in Oklahoma City. And currently, I believe the entire city joins me in celebrating my beloved high school. But more about that in just a few minutes. First, let me thank you for supporting these weekly conversations. Your continued support is very, very important to me and to my team. And supporting these conversations is very easy. You know, all you have to do is hit the share button. That's right. I want you to hit the share button right now. Don't let your community miss today's conversation. Also, your feedback is not only welcome, it is encouraged. Hit the like button and please comment during and after the broadcast and feel free to send me inbox messages, your thoughts, your comments, your concerns. It's all good, I want it all. If you're new to these weekly conversations, let me tell you, welcome to the family. We are uploading this conversation, all of our past conversations, the new ones, all to YouTube based on your feedback. So be sure to check out my YouTube channel and subscribe. Just look up Conversations with Qubit and browse some of the past conversations. I am very positive you will find a conversation that will pique your interest. Now, before we get started, let me tell you just the three simple goals I have for these conversations each week. One, I wanna add value to my people and to my community. Two, I want to inspire you to believe in what people and communities can become when we're willing to work together. And last but not least, I just wanna inspire you to love people, period. No strings attached. All this means is that I want you to be inspired. I want you to get useful information and resources, and I wanna celebrate groups, individuals, and organizations who are making a positive impact on our community. Every conversation on Conversations with Cubit will be about information, inspiration, and hope. Now, I must give a huge shout out and a huge thank you to my friend, my sister, none other than Mrs. Cecilia Robinson Woods, the superintendent of Millwood Public Schools for hosting tonight's broadcast. If you follow me at all, you know how much I love Millwood and anytime I have the opportunity to connect with this place, I jump on it. I also have to give a big shout out and a thank you to my friends at Green Pasture Studios out in Spencer, Oklahoma for hosting our weekly broadcast and for giving us a great place to call home. Do yourself a favor, look up Green Pasture Studios and find out about all the cool things they're doing, a full-fledged movie production out there in Green Pastures. Now, let me introduce to you my very special guest. My guest is, well, I, I, I guess you guessed it already, is uh, that we are not in the studio. My guest tonight is the 2022 Oklahoma State basketball champions. Y'all ain't too excited. All right. All right. Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. That's right. I'm here with the Millwood Falcon, Falcon basketball team. This team is led by none other than Coach Mike Jeffries, who has been at Millwood since at least 2016 or 2017. He'll tell us, he'll straighten us out. He took over directly after the legendary Chop Franklin. He is the coolest head coach in the city and one of heck of a leader. And I invited him on the show today just so you have the chance to talk about his staff, his team, and the overall journey to the state title. Welcome to Conversations with Cubic, Coach. Thank you, thank you. Blessed to be here. You got all the guys here. Yeah, all ready. Right. Yeah. Y'all good? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's good, that's good. Coach, tell me you got, you did it. Was this the goal the whole time, huh? It's always been the goal since day one. Day one, yeah. and this is your first one? It's my first one, yeah. And tell me about, well, first of all, before we start talking about the team and the journey, Where'd you come from? Because I came, I, I mean, you've been, I'm a little bit older than you, but I would have remembered you around here. You're not an original Falcon. No, I'm not an original Falcon. I, uh, I was brought in to uh, Cecilia. We've been knowing each other for a while. So uh, I was at Pumas City North when she uh, called me up and asked me if I wanted this opportunity, and I jumped all over it. So uh, I'm originally from Oklahoma City, but you know, with Cecilia, she went to John Marshall. So she's not an original Falcon either. I went to Northwest Classing. But we uh, met when we was like, you know, fifth grade from the north side of Oklahoma City. So, yeah, that's where we met. And uh, it all came together for both of us right here at Millwood. Yeah, yeah. But what about your, back, your background in basketball? Tell me you. 
Uh, you know, played uh, at Northwest Class in Obviously in high school, went to camera for a little bit, and uh, just kind of shut down from there and just started coaching. Uh, I coached, uh, I've been coaching ever since basically out of high school. But right. My dad, my dad started inner city, uh, and a group of his guys started inner city hoop league, which uh, started uh, with Dewey Elementary and uh, just all the east side elementary schools. Right. And we uh, coached that, and uh, just ever since that point, man, I've been doing AAU stuff and, you know, went to school, went back to school to uh, get my degree and started teaching at a... Uh, Eisenhower Middle School or Elementary at the time. Went to Two Lakes uh, in Putnam City. Coached a little bit there, and you know Lee Rowland. Oh yeah, that was my yeah, principal. Yeah, 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 yeah. Lee Rowland was your principal. Yeah. He's my mentor. Yeah, yeah he's yeah. my mentor. Yeah, yeah. Okay, very, well, very, should... very dynamic person, man. Yeah, but uh, yeah. I was there and uh, had the opportunity to coach uh, Cooper Middle School, and from that point, had the opportunity to uh, be an assistant coach at Putnam City North, and. Landed here, so I mean, you know, just kind of climbed, you know, climbed throughout the years. And it, it could not have been easy knowing you were coming behind Chop Franklin, who got what 14 or 15, 15. of these championships, yeah. right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Talk uh, about that a little bit. Yeah, I mean, you know, um, I mean, I played against Chop, you know, I mean, I was, when I was in high school, so I mean, you know, he's, he's always been a legendary coach. I mean, you know, back then he had a lot, a lot of gold balls then, too, so. <laughs> Midwood has always been rich in tradition when it comes to any type of, you know, basketball track and uh, football. But, um, yeah, coming from, you know, being able to uh, have him with me for a couple of years, I mean, was a huge help because he's just so humble. Right. I mean, he's just a very humble person. So when I came in and started coaching, he kind of let me just kind of take over the, uh, the reins. And, um, you know, he was always there for me to talk to. I also had Coach Webb, uh, Greg Webb, that uh, coached at Langston. He was uh, an assistant coach with me. So I had those two guys that kind of, you know, always lean on when I needed any help, you know, just had any advice about anything. But, yeah, it, it, you know, the pressure was obviously there. And, I mean, you know, I didn't really put in perspective until he, he had his retirement little tour or whatever. And uh, we played against uh, Douglas. Yeah. And during halftime, they brought all the trophies out. <laughs> and that's when I was like, wow, this, that, that's, that's when you just really see it and just like, wow, this is crazy. Like, this, he, he's an amazing coach and he's, just, he's, he's, you know, he's legendary. So, uh, from that point, I mean, I had a really good team, had an opportunity and went to uh, 2019 with the state championship. You know, we were feeling ourselves super confident and just got destroyed, you know, in that 2019 uh, state championship. But I mean, I still was able to talk to Chop about everything. He said, man, you win some, you lose some, just keep learning. So, you know, he's like, you never lose, you just learn. So I just right. kept, you know, just learn from that experience. And I mean, and it's really cool to see he's still around, that you still oh, yeah. embrace him. I can still call him. him. And, yeah, yeah I can still call him this day yeah. when I need any, any Do advice. Do these guys know him? Yeah, they all know him. Oh, yeah. Yeah. A couple of them, I mean, they were all, some of these guys were in middle school when you know, he was still here. So, I mean, they would see him around and, I mean, he would come in there and they talked to him. So, yeah. Do y'all know why we called him Chop? Yeah, y'all don't get SWATs no more, do you? No. Nah. Yeah, yeah. They, they, need, they, they need him. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Don't, don't believe the hype. If he tell you Chop was named after a pork chop, that's not where it came from. Anyway, anyway, so uh, I watched a little bit of the documentary. Good job on the documentary, by the way, fellas. So uh, I watched the documentary. No, I didn't watch a little bit of it. I watched all of it. It's that good. It's called The Race, uh, and I found it on YouTube. But one of the things that I saw, the secret sauce to the success of this team, I mean, it's a lot of things, a lot of ingredients, I think. But one of the secret sauce has to be uh, the staff. The assistant oh, yeah. coaches. You want to talk a little bit about them? Oh yeah, I mean, I was, you know, they are, yeah. I've been bragging about them since the day I was, you know, know I had all of them. You know, Donnie was with me last year. Uh, Nate, I got the, uh, had the privilege to have him come along, and Chev was always around too. And I always saw the passion of Chev. So when I knew I had all three of those guys. I mean, I just knew for sure. I mean, I, I talked about it constantly, how you know honored I was to be able to have those guys with me. And I mean, you know, every last one of them have a just have the roles and what they do, and it was just huge for our success this year. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna introduce, uh, you want to introduce the, the, anybody, the team, do the coaches, and then I want to meet these guys. Yeah, well, uh, yeah. where did Nate go? Nate, come on, man. <laughs> come on in there, Nate. All right, so we got Chev, Chev Smith right there. Stand up, Chev, so we can see. That's our young gun. He's a yeah. super Real passionate. dynamic. Yeah, Real very dynamic. dynamic, Very man. dynamic. Very, a lot of energy. I mean, it's yeah. a huge, uh, huge help, especially during the playoffs this year. And I think, I think I was watching it. I was watching episode, I don't know which one it was, but I was like, hey, man, calm down, calm down. I was talking about him, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was talking to the screen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. He's emotional, but it's, it's, it comes from that passion. Yeah. Donnie, that's our force. That's our bodyguard. So, you know, and Donnie, yeah. they, they know when Donnie says something, it's got some meaning behind it. You right, know what I mean? Right, so right. Donnie's always got in the background. It's all standing up big and, and strong for us. But, uh, and Coach Nate, he's got some experience. You know, coming from Douglas, uh, getting his gold ball. So, I mean, it's just that, just that, that uh, 
I, I get the impression when, when somebody when somebody is going to make the team run, it's Nate. Is that right? Yeah. Nate, yeah, Nate, yeah. <laughs> is that the one? Did yeah, I get, Nate, I always yeah, Nate. I saw that. I saw that. Sometimes yeah. I'm gonna call him Nate now because he'll try to make him run for all kinds of stuff. I'm like Nate, you know what I'm saying? Let's 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 get through this practice. But yeah, I mean, it's just it was just our mixture of coaching just it just worked out perfect, especially with these guys. I mean, like I said, it was it was a uh, an emotional year. So just having these guys, you know, that's strong and tough, and they all look up to them, had good relationships with them, just worked out perfect for us. All right, well, introduce introduce the team to me. All right, yeah. so uh, let's see. And y'all stand up. Y'all stand up. Cause I, yeah. All right, so we got you? Ricky Hunt. He's a junior. He's I, been with me since day I know one. Ricky. Yeah. I know Ricky. He's been yeah. uh, pretty much a starter for me with, since day one. So, I mean, he's, I call him the heartbeat of our team. Uh-huh. William Mays also been with me for three years. He's a junior. He's also pretty much a heartbeat. I mean, he's super tough, man. I mean, he's resilient. <laughs> just, I mean, nonstop. I mean, he's just an amazing kid, man. I love him. Yeah. His leadership this year was, it was huge, really huge for us this year. And you'll be around here next year. Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. This is our super uh, sensational freshman, Jaden Nickens, probably one of the best players in the state as a freshman right now. I mean, now. don't do that move. I mean, you just do this all the time. <laughs> yeah, that's all, that's all the time. That's all, <laughs> that's all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we got Darius Jones. Darius Jones is like a silent assassin. He kind of, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, he just he came in and made such a huge plays for us. And I mean, you know, you never really hear anything about him, you know what I'm saying, because he's, you know, he's so quiet about it, but I mean, he's, he came in clutch for us. Hey, you dealt with that big boy on, in the finals. You dealt with him. Yeah. He, was, he, he, I don't know. I was looking at him, so I was like, I'm scared of that dude. Somebody yeah. better get on him, but I don't want to be yeah. him. Right. <laughs> yeah. Craylon Liberty. Craylon Liberty is a Millwood kid, but he kind of, you know, jumped around a little bit, came back to his senior year. I mean, just probably one of our best defenders. I mean, just came in and just locked everybody down, just a pest on defense. So that was huge for us. Pest. Pesty. Yeah. Yeah, Jalen okay. Diller, that's one of my babies right here. <laughs> he's probably been with me the longest out of everybody. He's been, you know, he's, when, when I say just as far as on the team, he was, a, you know, he was a, on my team as a freshman four years ago. He's a senior. Really great shooter, man. Just a great kid. I mean, he's, right. I think he's number two uh, in a class of, for a senior, you know, for the, for the kids, uh, for the school. Okay. And academics, yeah. So he's a uh, you know, big time academic. Big guy. brain, big brain. Look yeah. at him. He a pro. Right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Mason Turner. Mason Turner is also a junior. Mason yes, Turner got that strap. Yeah. Mason Turner got that. <laughs> Mason Turner got that strap. <laughs> <laughs> this is one of our managers for me, Estelle. She's, yeah. she's been a big part of our, of our, you know, just you know, the kids. I mean, she spoils the kids. She does everything for them. So that's, she was huge for us. Right. Kobe Law, another kid, man. It's just been a big part of this program. <laughs> Huge part of this program. Done a lot for us this year. So, I mean, I mean, the last past three, you know, three years, he's just, he's, he's been a star for me for three years. Just a big part of our program. Carlos Strong, his last, na- his last name says it all. I mean, that's it. That, yeah, Strong, man. I mean, you know, he just, he's one of those other guys, super quiet, but just does everything, man. I mean, just rebounding, putbacks. Works hard, just a great. Gave that kid. big boy some problems on that yeah. final game. Yeah. Yes, I saw yeah. it. Yeah. Robert Wilson. Yeah. I don't know what to say about old Rob. Rob's yeah. a sophomore, you know what I'm saying? We call, he's called him Fat Boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so he, I mean, like, I mean, we, you know, in middle school, he used to be a little fat boy, so I used to frisk him down for donuts, but uh, <laughs> he didn't got long and thin, and just, I mean, he's just gotten way. Is he better. always smiling? Oh, yeah. Always yeah. smiling? They all, they yeah. all always smiling. They yeah. goofy. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And there's, there's old Dilly. Dilly. Yeah. Old Dilly. Chance Bubba Davis. I called him Dilly because I told him he looked like this horse. I said, you know what I'm saying, in my neighborhood back in the day. I said, he got a little baby horse face. So, yeah, that's, so I call him Dilly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, I mean, it's, these are my babies, man. I mean, just a great group of kids, man. We had a lot of fun with them. We had a lot of ups and downs, you know, good times and bad times. But for the most part, man, just, I mean, great sense of humor, these kids. Well, that's one, th- that's one thing I want to ask you about is, is in the documentary, you talk about uh, – all we've been through, like in the locker room, you're saying like, all we've been through, fellas, all of the season. So it indicated to me because it was it was almost every game you were reminding mm-hmm. them of all we went through. Talk about all the things, the journey uh, through the season to get to that to this goal ball. Well, obviously, I mean, you see, I have a lot of personalities on this team. You know what I mean? So you know, in the beginning when we first started, you know, I felt like there was a lot of selfishness because they, you know, they, every last one of these guys can play. So a lot, you know, and a lot of these guys have a chip on their shoulder. And they want to showcase what they can do. So. If they see this dude over there doing it, you know what I mean, they feel like they had to do it too, you know what I mean, they may feel a certain way because he's shooting too much. So there was just a lot of selfishness in the beginning, you know what I mean, very emotional. Um, so just trying to, you know, get them to understand that we're a really good team. Every last one of you guys have, you know, have a, uh, a part in, in our success. And, um, you know, just, you know, issues with families and things like that. I mean, you know, these kids have been through a lot, you know, personally that we've had to deal with. And I think that really helped us too because they were there for each other. You know, I mean, that's where a lot of that trust came in, too. I mean, they started trusting us coaches. I mean, they didn't trust us at one point. 
They feel like, you know, we were, you know, we, we were just blowing smoke. So, you know, just all that stuff, I mean, towards the end of the season, just came together. They just bought into our defense. And they just started trusting each other and having each other's back. And that's, that's, that's what, I mean, it was just the perfect timing for all that stuff to happen. Yeah. How did they, how did they take losses? Because you had five or six losses this season. Uh, every game wasn't a blowout, you know. But how did they take a lot? How did they bounce back? I mean, like I said, they're very emotional. So, I mean, you know, some, some, some would go, you know, be in the locker room going crazy. Some would be crying. Some would just be just zoned out, you know what I mean, just, you know, shutting down or whatever. So, it was, just, it was just all over the place. But, I mean, you know, they know how I am. So I'm the same way. I hate losing. You know, they, I tell them all the time I hate losing. You know, I, I don't like – I like winning, but I hate losing. Right. So, I mean, you know, there were times when we would lose. And, I mean, I've, I would be upset, but I would just – I would see the growth. So for me, it was like, okay, I'm a little disappointed because there were so many different things we could have done, but I see the things we've been talking about, they're starting to kind of buy in on, I see the growth. And I saw the growth of them starting to believe in each other. So, you know, it's, it's, you know losing sucks. I mean, it just is what it is. We hate losing, you know, and especially these guys, they hate it. Because, I mean, I, like I always tell them, I got a team full of dogs. Yeah. I mean, you know, we, uh, they, um, they, you know, every, every game they would count us out. Like, you know what I mean? You know, the, and they would basically say, well, we're, we're not disciplined. You know what I mean? I was like, you can say what you want to say, but we play tough defense and they dogs. And that's just, that's just the type of kids I have. I mean, they don't give up. They fight for each other. And you know, so, yeah, losses will be kind of tough sometimes. You know what I mean? They would, have, they would have little arguments here and there. You know, brothers would have arguments. And I'd tell them, hey, we have family. It's going to be arguments. It's okay. You know what I mean? It's going to be those moments. You know what I mean? As long as we get over and move, move forward, we'll be fine. And they always did. I mean, they would have their little moments, but they would move forward. I mean, they had a lot of love for each other. It was amazing. Find one of these guys to come up here and talk, talk to us a little bit about what they picked up as the season went along, like what they, what they learned from you, what they learned about themselves, and what they saw in the team. I'd like to – somebody. I'm going to pick Kobe because Kobe's kind of somebody that's been around. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. So I'm going to pick Kobe. Give it up for Kobe. Kobe. Come on, man. He's a senior. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Kobe, talk about the season, man. Talk about your coach, the season. Uh, he talked about you guys were a little selfish and stuff. How did you see it? Uh, I seen the season as whenever we first started off, we kind of had a season of everybody felt like they had to prove that they had a role on this team and that everybody felt like they had to prove that they were somebody. Nobody could prove that they just had a role, had to play into the team's whole role. But as the season progressed and went on, we started playing into a team's role. Everybody had to kind of fix my bad, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> come on, you all right? Come on. You good. You good. <laughs> but, no, uh, we started to figure out our roles as we started to go on with the season. And everybody started to figure out their roles. Right. As everybody started to figure out their roles, we started to take shots, take better shots, and everybody started to play better. What was the, what was the message that you knew you were going to hear from coach and the assistant coaches day in and day out? Was there a reoccurring message that, that you kept hearing throughout the season? Well, each coach gave us different type of flavors. Like, that was a good thing about it. We had a different type of coach feeling every aspect. Okay. Like, we had a player's coach, then we had a good coach who would give us one talk, then we had a coach who would give us a motivation talk who would be in our ear about the good things and the bad things. So it was good to have a mixture of things to hear in your ear. So like, What's this one? This, this, which, which, which one is he? Is he the motivation? Is he, which one is he? Um, don't, Co we won't Jeffy, tell him. Just tell him. I don't know. Coach Jeffrey is a tornado. You don't never know. Coach Jeffrey is a tornado. You never know what you're going to do with Coach Jeffrey. So. Coach Jeffrey, he's more of a tornado. Like, he angry, he mad, he love, he emotional. But everything come out of love in our tornado. At the top of that tornado is love. So I will give him that, truth be told. That's real good, man. That's good. Tornado. You got, we got to have to make you a T-shirt now. You got to have to make you a T-shirt now. Talked about who's a, who's who on the team is the jokester. I want to talk to the jokester. Bubba. Bubba. <laughs> Dilly. Come on, come on, Dilly. Come on Little down Dilly. here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Don't fall. Don't fall. All right. Now, so I kind of figured they was gonna pick you because uh, when when I watched the documentary. I could, I, I don't know if you were ADHD or whatever, man, but you were bouncing around the locker room and all this kind of stuff. Well, what? My, whole, my whole team is ADHD. The whole team is yeah. ADHD. <laughs> no, no disrespect, but it looked like you were having a fun. How do you turn it off? How, how do you go from being the fun-loving one, the jokester, to getting serious? I don't know, really, for real. 
These guys be laughing. They be laughing. They don't know how to laugh. Me, you always gotta laugh. You know, like they, they don't laugh, bro. They gotta cheer up a little bit. <laughs> they be too serious. That's why. That's why I feel like it is. Right at the minute, though, know? like you gotta laugh at the end of the day. That's why I think joy. You gotta have a lot of joy for real, for real. Cause they don't be laughing. Look at them. They just right. ugly. They ugly, but like <laughs> still. But yeah, we gotta laugh. They don't know how to laugh. What's right. On? So since I have you here, let's go. Let's let's fast forward to the end of the game. You are a freshman. Yeah. You are a freshman. No coach in, in 10 seconds left in the game is just calling a freshman to come up. What, what's the deal? <laughs> how, do, how do you end up on the court what's as a freshman? Deal? Oh, because I'm the best shooter on the team. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Bar none. Y'all agree? No. <laughs> <laughs> See, they hated on me, bro. <laughs> okay, so take us to that moment. You're on the, you're on the, we all seen it, like 9 million people seen the shot. We saw the confidence that you had. Talk about what's going through your mind, the play, what you thought was going to happen. Oh, I want to see what I thought was going to happen. Hear, yeah, I want to hear it all. <laughs> oh, boy. Ricky <laughs> had the wall, right? <laughs> he didn't hear me. I was talking to him. I know he didn't hear me, though. So he had the ball. He Ricky, we're talking about Ricky. Yeah, we're talking about Ricky. Yeah, right here. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Captain of the team, feel me? Captain of the team. Yeah, so he had the ball, right? Yeah. Dribbling, dribbling. He's about to, ooh, you see how he from with the ball? <laughs> he was going to just throw it up. Like, see, he, he was going to shoot it. He was going to shoot it. Well, you he know he wanted to shoot it. Yeah, he was going to shoot it. He knew yeah. he was. I heard, I heard people, so I was sitting, I was sitting way up, and I heard people saying, you know, Ricky finished this game, finished this game, and I'm like, I don't there know. He is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And, and so they were pumping you up to take that shot, and you changed your mind. Did you help him change his mind? Of course. Okay, talk he saw to, his face. Take us there. He saw my face, feel me? He saw it. Yeah. You know, he know I was ready. He's out of up. He didn't know I was ready, so vision on the team, like I said, so he just made the shot. Any discussion? End of discussion. End of discussion. Look, there's a there's a lot more there's a lot more to the discussion, I think. Ricky, Ricky, come on up and talk to me about come this, up, this trust Ricky, issue. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Is there... Ricky, you were about to take the shot. This thing but you decided to I don't know if you heard him or not. What made you give him the ball? I mean, what don't nobody know is me and Bubba, we've been in the gym. In the summer, we was working on that every time. The pass, kick in and uh, pass the ball with a, our coach, Chef. He got us in the gym working on that, two feet in the paint, pass the ball. So it was just, I knew what to do. I wanted to take the shot, knowing me. But if really, it was a play he designed where Carlos comes screening the top man. But he screened the wrong he man. The wrong man. Yeah. So it was like, hey, so I heard, I seen Bubba, and then, and then I seen one of our other coaches. So I'm like, hey, if it's destined, he hit it. So I had to, I really trusted my brother, regardless. Right. Do you feel like the trust? You, you, he built up that trust. Uh, the coaches, your practice, and all that stuff. All the trust was built up long before you got to that game. Long before, even in the summer, I trusted him. Yeah, that's good. Even as a freshman. As a freshman. He, I mean, it's not really, he's not really a freshman, though. On our team, it's no freshmen, it's junior, senior, none of that. We all the same. So that's it's good. just. Where did that come from? You decided that? The coach decided that? Or that's just the DNA of the team? How did it's that, it's how did... DNA, really. We all know what everybody can do. So we just tapped in with each other. Man, I love that. That's that's got to be really, really cool to hear it's amazing. Com coming from. Yeah, especially, like I said, I mean, that's the, and that's the vibe we all felt. Especially, I mean, like as soon as the playoffs started, that's the vibe we all felt. I mean, every last one of us, we just saw it, and it was it was it was truly amazing, man. We we all felt it. The whole team, the coaching staff, we felt it. Yeah, like we could see it. Just we we just saw it materialize, just like almost out of nowhere. Right. Have you felt uh, after winning, Ricky, and, and anybody from the team that wants it, after winning, a lot of publicity, a lot of attention, like all these cameras and all that kind of stuff, what, 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 has, it, what has changed for you as a player and as a student here at Millwood? I mean, nothing changed. Everything's still the same. But really, we don't give much props to Darius Jones because that Marlowe game, if it wasn't for him, we wouldn't be in the state championship, really. Right. So he he actually that. started it off first. Yeah. And then it just transferred over to the next day. 
Yeah. So you had some, uh, what you call some GBG, some get back games, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? Somebody want to talk about the get back game? You want to talk about it? Come on. You want to talk, Nick? Everybody else want to talk about it. Because you yeah. guys kind of originated, right? The GBG? No, yeah. yeah. nah, actually, no, nah, no. Nah. <laughs> Chef, 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 yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, so yeah. what happened was, uh, is it 2019? Uh, I think 2019, we made it to state versus Kingston, right? Uh, Bring the microphone up, yeah. Um, so 2019, made it to state. I was eighth grade. You good, you good. Eighth grade. Uh, we watched, we lost by 30 to Kingston. And then last year, we had a good team. We were just undisciplined. Uh, made it to, what, area? Mm -hmm. Lost to Westville. So they ended our season. So this year, like, so we had up and downs, first half of the season, second half of the season, everything just changed. So we all started locking in, trusting the coaches, and play Westfield again. That's when Shell made it up. He said, it's a get back game. So we all stuck with the motto. Uh, we played for each other, and uh, we wanted that win. So we won, and, was, and we called it the GBG. And then we got to see uh, Kingston again in the first round of state. And from there, it's just like everything changed. We all like, just wanted to win state, so we beat them. I get back game, and then from there we just took off in one state. What was the what was the secret sauce to driving that message to making sure that every kid got the GBG? GBG? Yeah. Uh, so GBG originated from a song, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so I listened to it, and um, I'm just big on. No, I'm a competitor. I compete in anything. I, you can probably compete with me doing flips right now. I try to see if I can mm. do it better than you. You but win, I give. Nah, yeah. <laughs> nah, but nah, it's just a message for the kids to understand. Like, okay, you got me once, but I'm gonna get my get back. I'm gonna get my lick back. Kind of like when you were a kid and somebody hit you, you gotta get the last touch. Right. So right. it's just kind of that message, and um, they bought into it. We use that to kind of motivate us, drive us throughout the whole process, and. Um, it was all personal for everybody. I know he wanted to get his lick back from getting there. And he, didn't, he didn't get the ultimate goal. I know the kids felt bad from the, the loss they took from Westville last year. Um, and it was just a kind of a, a message that everybody felt. Right. So we stuck with it. it was short, simple to the point. Well, I, I know we got to kind of bring this to an end, but I got to tell y'all that your coach is the real deal. Uh, we set our cameras up in a different spot, and we was only going to be able to have just him and I in the shot. It's a no go. He says. Everybody or nobody. And so he, he's, he's a ride and die kind of coach. I want y'all to know that he's true to it. We talked about it, uh, this, this whole deal uh, in, uh, before we started, and it's all about you guys. So y'all give it up for your coach, man. He's a real good leader. I want to say you one more thing since we, since we have it here. Uh, you won. You brought pride to the east side. It's Millwood. And I want you to know just because you got this attention on Millwood is that you also have attention on your character. Don't let anybody anybody tear down what you all have built because of undiscipline, right? Because of, of a, a lapse in character. You got it, you know you have everything it means to be a champion, not just on the court, you have everything to be a champion in life. I believe in you and Coach obviously does and that's what he talks about all the time. So applaud the Millwood Falcons with 20, 22 champions. Y'all got pep assembly you gotta get ready for, right? Yeah, yes, sir. Yeah. All right. Look, they already lined up. <laughs> right. Teachers finna lose for the team, so. <clears throat> Not finna happen. <laughs> Not good. finna happen. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> That's it from the New York Falcon, Eastside Oklahoma City. Conversation with Cuba. We'll see you next week. Thank y'all.